Deca Power Fusion 205 is a six in one multi process welder that can flux core, MIG, pulse MIG, yep, it can do aluminum, stick, TIG, freaking laser beam. I mean, and a plasma cutter. They did send me this welder, but just hold on. It doesn't mean that I'm gonna hold back. I've got about eight things that it would be nice if they changed or added that I will be going through as they come up. And for all the good stuff, don't take my word for it. Check out how beautiful these welds have turned out. One highlight before we dive in is the power. You can run it on either 120 or 240 volt. And the sweet thing is that this cord is over 10 feet long. And then if you are using the adapter, you get an extra four feet. Pretty much my only welder that I can actually plug it in and still have the machine up on the table. First up is the plasma cutter. It's got a great torch. I like the feel of it. Also, I like this swivel type connection. Comes with an air regulator and water separator. You need the dry air for that plasma cutter. The first thing I'd change is actually give us a PSI gauge. Yes, I agree, metric is better, but all the tables I have are Imperial, so it just helps out. Second thing that would be nice is a cheat sheet or suggested settings chart. Not that it matters because I couldn't even cut through eighth inch steel. The tip kept getting stuck and even boogered it up so bad that I had to replace it. So thank you Deca Power for adding in those consumables. I did think for a moment that it might be a high frequency start issue, that it just wasn't getting that arc started to cut through. And then I realized it was the air pressure and it was only like at five PSI. Turns out that it's kind of hard to cut through metal without any air. Turn that up and now it cuts like butter. So I kept going, cut through that eighth inch at 30 amps and 0.2 megapascal. Quarter inch at 40 amps and 0.3. And then topped it off with some half inch thick steel running at the full 50 amps and 0.4 megapascal, which is right about 60 PSI. Time for flux core. Check out these welds, they turned out awesome. The handle feels great. This is a Euro style connection, which I'm kind of getting a little fond of. For flux core, make sure you do grab the K or the knurled rollers. Make sure you switch the connection inside the panel over to the MIG column and the ground can stay on the positive. Connect that little dongly lead to the negative terminal. I am loving this dual drive wheel setup. Easy panel setup, and I'm testing it out on the synergetic mode where you just pick the amperage and it chooses the voltage. Within that setting itself, you actually can change the voltage offset, but it was welding pretty good as is. The couple things I would change for this process are first, when running in manual mode, the output is in meters per minute. Already mentioned, we like those inches, even though they're ridiculous. So a nicer inches per minute output would be nice. Now the second thing, which would be a cherry on top, would be to add a flux core nozzle. That's this little black nozzle. Uh, I, like to keep, I always like keeping my MIG nozzle nice and clean for MIG welding. And so this was a spare flux core nozzle that I had, ended up using it. And since I was tired of converting, I just kept it on the synergetic mode, which was turning out awesome. For the testing on this one, I started out with an eighth inch coupon, just flat, and went up to about 110 amps, and that was way too hot, so I dropped it down a bit, ran that fillet T-joint at 90 amps. And I'll say it again, those welds turned out beautiful. MIG time. Here's the checklist for switching it from flux to MIG. Switch out the rollers to the V groove, not the U or the knurled. Switch the polarity from DCEN to DCEP. You want that electrode positive. I'm using 100% CO2 on some 0.030 solid core wire. Now it comes with some extra hose and fittings, but don't ask me what size, I'm pretty sure those are metric. So. Yeah, there's yet another thing. Set the CO2 to about 20 to 25 CFH. 
Now, it would be nice if they added a regulator and some of those US fittings. Typically, the ones you'll see here are 5 8 threaded. And as mentioned, I, I don't know what size those are. I'm assuming you're gonna need a metric end. I got around it by using a slightly undersized barbed end and just used a couple extra hose clamps. They do have a pretty good manual with each setup guide for all of the different processes. But it would still be nice to have a suggested setting chart somewhere on the machine. I ran this first test beat at 95 amps on some eighth inch plate and it turned out pretty good. Now switching over to that filler weld on a T-joint, yes, I should have known those joints take more heat, should have turned it up a bit, I didn't. Either way, I think maybe 100 or 105 would probably be spot on. Regardless, it turned out pretty good. We're ready for MIG aluminum. Now here's your checklist from going from a MIG steel to aluminum. Switch out the rollers to the U, not the V or the K. Now the wire should be either 4043 or 5356. I do know 5356 is a little stiffer and a little easier. I was using 4043 and by the time I got the settings tuned in, it turned out pretty good. Switch out the liner to a Teflon or a graphite liner. Keep that whip as straight as possible. Oversize your contact tip by at least one size. To get those starts looking a little better, you should probably preheat the metal. To MIG weld the aluminum, you will need 100% argon. That C25 or that 100% CO2 will not work. These first couple tests were done on the synergetic mode and it works. The settings have to be a lot higher and really it, it's pretty finicky. You have to get it just right on for it not to burn through, but then also to get a good penetration. Switching over to the Pulse MIG, also don't forget to check which gas you're running with. Now I think for these eighth inch plate coupons, I, I was able just to get to that point. And of course I wanted to switch over to the Pulse and to test that out, which I did. Now just for a couple notes with the Pulse, you gotta turn those settings way down or else you'll just burn right through. And then at the end, I think for this one inch tubing, I was getting it down pretty well. I'm, I, I know it's not perfect, but I mean, for aluminum MIG welding, I'd say that didn't turn out too bad. Stick welding. Uh, yep, it can stick weld. Ending with the TIG time. Since we already have the argon hooked up, let's do some TIG welding. First things first. If I decide to keep this as my primary TIG, I will definitely be changing out that huge 26 torch head for something smaller. Now I'd get a stubby gas lens kit, but let's just keep it as is with what it came with. You've already got high frequency start, which is nice, and that is controlled by that little finger switch. Deca power, if you wanna make this a great welder, just add a foot pedal for that amperage control. And for what this machine comes with, the TIG process isn't too bad. Awesome all-in-one welder, especially coming in at $5.99. Way to go, Deca Power. I'm DIY Pro. See, oh wait, also, two-year warranty. Almost forgot. See you next time.